Well, death wobble still there. So I noticed there was a dead spot on the shock, which is actually a, a stabilizer damper on the front. And we should have just replaced that when we did this, had it off the first time. So now we're back and uh, let's fix this again. So we got our shock out here. It comes with a new mounting bolt. This goes through a little clamp that's on the uh, tie rod end. And a couple of spacer and a new nut to go onto that guy. It has a nylon nut. All of our tools that we need to use to do this, 17 millimeter socket and a 15 millimeter wrench. That's about it. So it's a fairly easy thing to do here. Let's knock this out real quick. So this nut's welded on. Don't try to take this one loose. It's gonna stay there. You don't even have to put anything on it. If it does turn, somebody's broke it loose before. So this bolt, it'll come out the top. Let's take her out here. You'll reuse this bolt. Most kits send you that other one. Here's your 17. Other side, 15. Yo diggity. So you're not taking loose the clamp on your tie rod ends. This is the clamp for your tie rod ends. This is only sole purpose is to hold on to your tie rod end. This is when you turn, this comes from your steering box, turns here, this turns both wheels and kind of adjust it. So you can adjust your toe in, toe out by turning this bar, loosening the clamps. That's what the alignment shop does. Just like that. But how much oil's all over this and that he's not leaking, has a le doesn't have a leak up on the engine or anything. This has a bad spot in it that we showed you before. We'll pull it, pulls pretty easy. I can feel the bubbles. See how easy that goes in and out right there. So when you're putting this shock on, make sure your ends, you're putting it on the right way. One end has a little bit bigger hole than the other. That guy is bigger than that guy. See that? So this end with the small end usually goes down here on, the, on your uh, right side of your tie rod end. This end fits the bolt that came out where that nut's welded on. So make sure it goes there because it ain't going to go there. So let's put this on. All right, so this one came with a new bolt right here. The space, it came with a spacer also, so it heads a little smaller than, or actually the bolt's longer that they gave us to use. So the spacer goes here. We're gonna turn it when we get done, make sure that we don't have a clearance issue, that we're not hitting anything with that spacer on there. You can jack the vehicle up if you want, but we're just leaving it down just because a couple bolts. Not anything super tough to do. And uh, that's it, folks. Pretty easy. All right, here's what we're doing. We're turning it all the way one way. We're going to make sure that this doesn't hit on anything. It shouldn't. Go the other way. Our steering pump was not happy. Working it hard. Sitting. Coming to the end of the travel. We're good. All right, straighten back out. We're good. We're gonna go off for a little test drive and make sure that that uh, takes care of the steering wobble for this. Well, looks like we still have a little bit of a death wobble. Uh, we're gonna have to do a little bit more diagnosis here on the old Jeep ski. Uh, we're gonna check our tie rod ends. Uh, see what we can find there. I think we got a loose tie rod end on the uh, pitman arm. A little bit worn out. So we're gonna end up replacing all of them. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Getting her jacked up right now. So we gotta get some jack stands under this bad boy. Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> All right, we're gonna take the wheels off on both sides just to give us a little easier access to the tie rod end. The pitman arm, we're gonna have to come from the top up here. We might have them steer it to where it pushes that nut right out in here so we can get that off. It'll kind of swing right here because it's real close to the frame as you see it right back in there. The tie rod ends are easy to find on the, for parts. It's uh, your bottom left and bottom right tie rod ends. The upper drag link up here, these ends are a little tougher to find. They're the same as your tie rod ends, you can see, but uh, the one on the cross on the other side is a uh, at Pittman arm, upper left, and then this is upper right, so off the drag link. Uh, so it's kind of tough to find. Um, my buddy did a little research here Russ on Rock Auto. I'll throw them out there. dot com. A little, a little sales pitch for them. Not get, not getting paid for that one, but really good prices. Too. <laughs> really good prices on it. And it's kind of easy that you can pull up some stuff and look look around and be able to find it. So, uh, what we're going to do now is we got to take these cotter keys out of these castellated nuts. So you just kind of bend these down a little bit, like that. Sometimes they're rusted in there a little bit. We went ahead and sprayed all these uh, tie rod ends adjusting areas right here with a little uh, penetrating lube. You know, like a PB Blaster or WD. Let me just kind of tap those out. Once you get them started, you can usually kind of work them out. Like so. Then we'll take this nut off. We got a... Uh, Three quarter. All right, so what I've got here is a pickle fork for uh, removing your tie rod ends. Usually if you use these, it's gonna trash the, the boot on, on these old ones, so it's something that you don't wanna, I mean, it, once you use it, it kinda tears your boots up and you can't really reuse it unless you can replace your boot on top of one. But most of the time, when you've got this tool out, you're looking to replace your tie rod ends anyways. Um, Another thing to look for is if you have a torn boot and gets contaminants in there, and that's another reason to replace these. So what you want to do is kind of split that gap, go in between it. It's going to be kind of loud. So I had Russ turn it all the way to the right, that's because it was starting to move in on us. If you can get this in there to where it kind of stick. Should lock. What's going on here? Or not. No, there, there, there now it's locked. Okay. There it is. Okay. If you can get this to stick, then you can get it in there and just hit this spot with a little sledge, and usually it'll, that'll pop loose. There it went. Yahtzee. Yahtzee. All right, we're turning it to the left here. See if we can get that pitman arm out. The steering link right there. See how oh, now we're kind of just out from underneath that a little bit. So we should be able to get that nut loose easier and get the cotter key out of it. Take the cotter pin out. And then that one's a little trickier to get at. Right? Yeah, it's just you don't have a whole lot of room to work right here. There we go. Take the nut off. I'm fogging up on my glasses. This one we're probably gonna have to use an open end wrench because see I can't fit my fit that guy right there, so let me go grab. Oh yeah. It's gotta be. Everybody's trying to move on me. There we go. Send a little shock wave through in here, see if we can get it to pop loose now. There it went. That's your worst one to get loose right off the pitman arm because you don't have room to really swing at it. You can 
get another angle coming this way at it also. Drop the bar down, you can hit on this side of it. So if you don't have an impact with a uh, pickle fork on it, they make some of these that are handheld where you stick it in the tie rod end and then go to town with a nice sledge. So up here we got your drag link. Put it in my vise. I just put a little uh, reference mark so that we don't get the bar turned around and we know which end goes to the pitman arm. This end goes to the pitman arm, this go end goes to the right, right hand spindle. What we're going to do now is we're going to count the threads, our openings right here. That'll kind of give us a, a rough idea of how, where to set these up at also. And then we're going to measure, because it's easy if it has a, has a grease cert in the bottom, you just measure from this grease cert across to the other side to that grease cert, take your measurement, and you can set those two up and you'll, you'll be right in the ballpark on it. So let me take these measurements real quick. We're going to... We're just going to ballpark our measurement, I mean, because he doesn't have a grease cert on it. Um, this end looks a little bigger than that, so you can't really measure to the outer edge. I mean, you could put a little little ding in the bottom of it, flip her over, and then you could put a kind of measure from the, try to get hit the center of this one to the center of this one, you know, get a, get a measurement that way also. You'll be in the ballpark, but if the ends are real close to being the same, which they should be. I mean, you could also just count your, th sometimes by counting your threads, it'll also get you in that same spot. So we're gonna do both. We're gonna count our threads and take a measurement and see where that gets us. Hold that one right there, buddy. Put it right on that little dot. We're gonna, we're gonna do two different measurements here. I got, I got right at 40 inches. We're gonna flip it over. Try it from this side. Try doing it from the center of the bolt. To the yeah, we're just gonna kind of get it, get it straight up and down. I mean, it's so tough to do that. We're just. But the just, alignment shops fix all. This. Well, yeah, you just want to be able to get it down to the alignment shop. So we'll just go from the outside of this guy. Forty and a quarter. So we're gonna count our threads now. All right, I went ahead and loosened this bolt right here, a little clamp bolt on it. We sprayed it down right here before we started this with a little lubricant, and you can see where it's coming loose already. One of these is a right-hand thread, and the other is a left-hand thread. This one is a left-hand thread. Hmm. Do that just complicate things? No, because when you when they're doing the alignment. They loosen these two clamps and they can turn this bar one way, oh, make the bar okay. longer, or make it shorter by turning it the other way. Gotcha. So one's a right hand, one's a left hand. And that's that's the adjustment on doing the alignment on it. Oh, okay. This stuff gets everywhere. I mean you go to use a little bit and by the end of the day you're gonna have this all over your face and I don't it just does. Maybe I'm the only one that jumps jumps all over me. <laughs> it's a little anisease. I like to put this stuff on something like this to where it ain't gonna seize up on you. So we measured it, put a little dimple in the bottom of this one, kind of close to center. So we got our 40 inches going across the, on the top. It was a little easier and this one's real stiff and it was off. So I figured we'd have better luck going on the back side. We're gonna tighten these back up. 30 foot pounds for the clamp. And it's not a whole lot. That's it right there. Bam. Cool. Let's do the other end. We got one stuck. That one's stuck. Yeah. Got one stuck now. Um, we've taken our clamp loose, gotten it over on this side. It has these little clips. Just slide the clip off. We've sprayed it with a little uh, enforce, but it is not wanting to go anywhere on us. So now it's time to get out a little hot wrench. I'm out of uh, oxygen right now, so I can't use my oxyacetylene torch. So we're going to do a little propane. And if need, we'll go with a little map gas and see what happens here. So. Hopefully this works. Propane's a slower heat than uh, oxyacetylene. You can 
see right up there where there's a little dirt on the threads and not nice and clean where we had the thing right there, so. Yeah, I get a little, you get a little dirt and stuff in there. Took about 10, 15 minutes, or probably 10, 5, 10 minutes of heating that up. Get that out of there. You can kind of see down in there where it's got a little corrosion and some, some iggies down in that. We'll just take a little brush and brush them out of there and then put some anti-seize down in there and should slide right back together. For that one, a vise was mandatory. There's no other way we would have got that loose without the old vise. I call this vise. I call it Miami. Nothing better than a nice old toothbrush to clean those. Unless you got a nice little wire brush. We do, but it's just a little, little iggies in there. Get them out. And Tacy's in it again. In some cases, bigger the glob, better the job. This is one of those I'd like to think that it would be. Put our clamp back on it here. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get this up on here. And we're going to measure it again. Get it set to our 40 inches on the back side of these, close to center. And uh, then we're going to go install it on back on the Jeep. So we're stopping right here where we're at because it's getting real tough to move right there. So that's where we were stuck on the back one. And we're only about a quarter inch away, eighth of an inch away from being at 40 inches from our point to point, which is what we want to be at. So I'm gonna back it off a couple, one, one turn here, leave it here, and we're gonna get our, our 40 inches by moving this one out just a little bit. Back on, uh, let's see, righty loosey. So easy adjust on this side. We're gonna back it out a little bit here. Get our measurement down again. I like to put a little anti-seize up in the, these areas right here, a little more on the threads. This one up in here. Get your nut started. And remember, we put that little mark on the drag link so we knew which side came over to the pitman arm. Just because I do forget things. Lo and behold, we were looking through the little bags of the, cotter, the new cotter keys we got. This was in with the cotter key. So we got our grease cert that goes into this side. And yeah. Oops, there it is. Little itty bitty seven millimeter. We're probably 930 seconds if you don't have a millimeter. Not very tight, just like that. Then we'll hit that baby with the grease gun when we're all done. Now we're just tightening up our castellated nut. Probably have it access to it at your local library. All data is what I've used. We're going set on mine 35. 35 foot pounds, so probably between 35 and 40 on these ends. I was going a little higher and it didn't it didn't feel right, so we're gonna stick with that. So we're lined up and we went about an extra four foot pounds to get that to line up, get the cotter key to go through. Just fold those over like so. I like to do is trim one off and put one down, one up. You can bend them both over the top if you want. You can bend them around the side. Just want them. Make sure that they're there. Oh, ooh, yellow jacket. I had Russ turn his steering wheel a little bit to the right to bring this nut out here in the opening so that we can get a torque on top of this nut. And then we'll put our cotter, pee, cotter pin through it also. 
this side it says. See, I was able to, by getting it over out of the way, I can get my socket on it. That's they usually give you a plus or minus on uh, these torques. So you start with your minus, and then when you need to go a little bit more to get your hold to line up. <sighs> There it is, I see it coming through. I need to go just a, just a skosh more. There it goes. So you do the same thing on this as you would these bottom ones. So good luck in your wrenching folks. When you do the bottom one, make sure that you take the shock off. We got uh, all four tie rod ends, upper, lower, the pitman arm and the outers all done we ended up we had to buy a new bar we had one tie rod end that was stuck in it so bad that we were just trashing the bar and it was we were we'd spent about an hour and a half trying to get it undone had it heated up red hot and just didn't have the leverage to get it undone so the bar was only about 40 bucks at the parts store so it was worth getting that and saving the headache on it and so now we're just going to slap the tires back on, torque our lug nuts, and then uh, he's going to take it down for an alignment on that. And should cure his death wobble. So hope this was helpful to you guys. Uh, appreciate everybody watching. Take care. Mechanic Pete out. Mm -hmm.